Well, welcome everyone to this. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for, for all the messages that are confirming. It's a little bit um, strange, man. So therefore, I will, I will pretty much start over um, in talking about the uh, Enescu F sharp minor sonata. And um, you might uh, wonder what is the pur purpose of this um, uh, broadcast. And I, I, re I woke up this morning to a rather nasty message from a Romanian music critic, uh, which said, uh, answering to my title, Discovering Anescu's F sharp minor sonata, he said, well, it's a bit late, isn't it? It's, it's been played in the 50s uh, by Maria Fotino, a great Romanian pianist. Um, and I said, well, yes, it doesn't mean the world is just discovering the F sharp minor sonata, but, uh, or that I'm just discovering it. Although I, in a way I discover it every, every day that I look at it. Uh, but I think looking at these pages that seem a bit forbidding at first um, will reveal, I hope, um, something that I, I myself consider a, a, a treasure. Although I didn't arrive to, to like it um, quite so easily. Um, and indeed learning it was quite challenging at first. And now, to, to go back to where we left uh, last week, I was talking about the relationship between this sonata and Enescu's opera, Oedipe, which was just premiered in London um, a few years ago, I think in 2016, at the, at the Royal Opera House. Bună seara, aș vrea să răspund și ascultătorilor din România. Voi vorbi în engleză pentru ca uh, mesajul să poate fi înțeles universal. I, I said good evening to uh, the listeners who are tuning in from Romania. Um, so there is a strong bond between this, the first movement of this sonata, opera Oedipe, which is in a very, as, as the title would suggest, it's in, in a very dark setting. And we, we get this, uh, this dark, tragic feeling very much in the first movement. So I will just play again what I did last week, the, the first notes of the prologue of Oedip. And now I shall play the beginning of the piano sonata. So, as you see, we're very much in the season and the, the piano reduction. And he interrupted this process to write the sonata. So, as, as I said, the first movement is steeped in the spirit of that opera. Um, looking, I was I touched on another thing, which is looking at the beginning and the mode that Enescu uses, which is the I this would bring to mind to to many, I'm sure, um, a, a piano sonata of rather epic proportions which has this very same double harmonic minor in, in the, in, within the first few bars. I'm talking, of course, about the great Liszt B minor sonata. Uh, and the similarities don't stop here. Um, as in the Liszt Sonata, there is a great economy of material and of motifs that get transformed throughout the piece and, and almost to the point of being uh, unrecognized from one another. So this is, this is something that is not obvious uh, to the listeners, but it, it contributes to the, to the unity of this piece. Uh, for example, uh, the second subject, It 
it it is it is worlds apart uh, from from the but it is in fact derived from the same material so this is again the second subject Noting um, the precision with which Enescu marks his his scores, and I would like to share with you something uh, briefly. This is uh, an explanation. It is it is from the facsimile of the manuscript, an explanation of uh, less usual markings. Uh, so, in addition to the to the usual. Um, degree dynamic uh, markings. We have also ben piano. We have poco forte, uh, ben forte, uh, poco sforzando, uh, poco rinforzando, ben ben rinforzando. It's very interesting. Also, we have this. Um, in addition to to depress and when to release the pedal, we have signs from for when to half change the pedal, marked by a circle. Uh, we pianists do that anyway. Um, but it is rare that we see that uh, notated so diligently in a score. Um, we occasionally also see the the marking senza rigore, which um, makes us believe that in the absence of this marking, we should play in tempo, so with rigore. Um, so. I will now play you a little bit uh, a, a longer fragment from the exposition of the first movement. second subject that I was talking about earlier and a typical example of senza rigore was when we reached uh, this point <laughs> quickly followed by a tempo so it is very clear where, where we should be taking freedom and when not and uh, its uh, movement lends itself to a romantic interpretation so it's as a performer I feel like I, I constantly have to keep myself 
in check and and in fact um, just reveal the complexity of the music by by playing it in time because it's it the the, the improvisatory quality in it is written in um, and this brings us to the question of is there some uh, folk uh, inspired uh, are there some some folk inspired tunes in it and the question to th the answer to that is not a straightforward one uh enesco isn't barred a lot of folk music that he he has heard and that is um weaved into to his style and uh, we get uh, hints of that sometimes but we, we can't say there's a definite um uh, traditional uh, romanian style in this moment uh, movement perhaps in this uh, Senza Rigore moment, we can get a hint of that. And we will, we will see later on, there's an episode in the recapitulation um, that does not appear in the exposition, uh, which is a, a very, a very um, lovely uh, tune in, in uh, irregular times that could very easily be uh, inspired by folk music. Um, this, this is the Allegretto Piacevole episode in the recapitulation. <laughs> The simplicity of the tune is um, contrasting, contrasted by the complexity of the accompaniment and, and the rich um, chromaticism in, in, the, in the harmony. So it, it, is, it is a very uh, beautiful episode uh, right before a coda that brings back uh, the first subject and, and the, the darkness of, of the beginning of this movement. Um, it's in the in a sort of form of a pasacaria. We we have the um, theme being uh, re repeated in the bass and a, a, a number of very elaborate um, variations happen on that. Um, so I will play you now this coda and this returning return to F sharp minor and to the to the um, first subject. So this is the way that um, minor second. Now, moving on to, uh, th there's, there would be much more to say about the first movement, but I'm aware of, of the passing of time. So moving on to the second movement, um, we could not find ourselves in a, in a more different uh, place in terms of character and, and uh, mood of this movement. Um, and it's a it's a very scherzando movement. It's presto vivace, and it starts that. So here is the beginning of this second movement. <laughs> We, we 
seem to think, <laughs> I, at least my hearing uh, leads me to believe that uh, this would be a, a first subject, uh, would be the, 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 the subject of the fugue. This would be the second entry. But th that fugue never comes. And um, the Beethoven sonata I'm, I'm thinking of, where we have a, a similar kind of joke, is of course opus 10 number 2, where in the last movement, um, we, s we seem to have the beginning of a fugue. But it, it turns into something else. Um, so, that um, keeps, um, keeps reappearing is um, this one. So, um, and it gets transformed in, in many um, very fun ways, I would say. It even gets a jazzy reinterpretation to um, a rhythm of uh, an irregular rhythm of 5 4 uh, with a certain uh, folky element um, feeling to it. <laughs> The, the movement uh, towards the end um, spirals into a really uh, crazy kind of dance and ends like this. So this it's a, a, a false note um, intended. And at the end of this movement, one has to wait long enough for that B flat to turn into an A sharp, which sounds absolutely the same, in, but it can have a different uh, connotation. Um, and there can be much debate about that, whether it matters if it's uh, B flat or A sharp, but that's a, a discussion for another time, perhaps. And we get to, to the real uh, gem for me of this sonata, which is the third movement, Andante Molto Espressivo. And just to say that this structure of a moderato first movement and a fast second movement and an Andante last movement is found in an S symphony. Um, in which, however, the, the second movement is, is, a, is a darker, uh, much darker uh, thing than, than uh, this playful Presto Vivace. So once the resonance of that uh, B-flat octave with the wrong note has died away, uh, we begin the, the final movement, Andante Motor Espressivo, with these bell sounds.
might have noticed if you know uh, Ravel's uh, Gaspar Durani, a similarity with Le Gibet uh, is, is different. It's the piece is called Le Gibet, it's about the, 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 the gallows. It's a, it's a, it's a very different um, uh, atmosphere that we're talking about. This is a very um, um, rêveur, a very dreamy movement. Um, this is a word that Enescu uses in, a, in an interview with Bernard Gavotti, um, which is uh, available in printed form and it, it, it is uh, on, on YouTube. You can hear Enescu's voice um, um, where he talks about this movement. Undeniable that uh, there are these distant bells um, and there's a great sense of nostalgia, of, of yearning in it throughout it and and that is i associate that with also with the romanian word that is is um quite hard to translate in other languages the word dor which means um uh, can mean to miss something but it can also mean a, a, a deep are a very important moment there 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 was there was a place in the first movement at, at the at the end of the um, exposition where where we had a, a, a quasi campana moment um, and here again we have the bells. In, it's worth saying that while this sonata marks the beginning of a of a new, more elaborate language for Enescu, coming if you, if you compare it with the, uh, his suite for piano in in D major, uh, which is um, very different is a sort of uh, a spectral music avant la lettre um, in, in which the, the, the there is a very um, brilliant depiction of bells in the night using a certain combination of uh, of notes that create certain harmonics that uh, it is a very interesting uh, piece to hear uh, I haven't played it so I cannot play it for you um, so we see that that idea of of carillon nocturne, of, of bells in the night, um, being present here in in this movement, um, extremely uh, delicate and and luminous um, second subject. <laughs> Another um, compositional element that is starting with this sonata, it, it's, it's, it becomes a, a really a feature of of Enescu's writing for piano. Um, it, it had been already used in, in chamber music and in his uh, in inner deep. Is the the uh, principle of heterophony, which is um, a form of musical syntax that is is not. It's something in between polyphony and uh, and unison, um, and it's it is not so used in the in the Western classical music world. It's mostly associated with does their own little variation on it, and some may lag behind, some may go ahead, some may add an ornament, um, and there is a, a beautiful example of this in in this uh, movement, and it's interesting to follow. Um, between the hands, um, how one of them is ahead and then the other one, and it lags behind, and the other one is ahead um, while playing the same notes. <laughs>
and you might have noticed um, a very interesting effect um, which I will show to you on paper also the notes that I played silently without making a sound that that <laughs> And um, that's about it for um, what I what I would uh, say now. Oh, good, good. It has been already uh, some time. Um, apologies for the rather alternative tuning of my piano. Uh, as everyone else, I could not get a tuner in these times. Uh, and also apologies for my wrong notes. Um, it's I'm still working on switching from my speaking brain to my playing brain. Um, and having said that, I'm happy to take uh, to answer any questions in in either English or Romanian, if there are any. Okay, I, I can see there are no questions and th that might be uh, because no one wants to ask anything or it might be because there is a big lag between what I'm saying and what's happening. So um, I'm, as I'm learning as I'm going along. So maybe next time it would be a good idea for me to uh, uh, ask you to send questions at the beginning. They are there in the chat. In, in any case, um, this is still early experiments for me with live streaming. I, I, I hope you found this uh, mildly interesting or entertaining and I might continue doing this um, with, with other works also or on, on various topics. If there are no questions, I would like to say thank you very much for tuning in to everyone and um, feel free to write to me uh, with any suggestions or uh, questions or uh, complaints <laughs> thank you um, the plan is that I will do these these live streams on uh, Thursday evening and if if nothing major changes um, expect to see me again next Thursday with uh, a fresh topic and uh, which I will announce in advance thank you and see you soon Oh, I'm sorry. I've, I've, and if if anyone is still watching, I've, I've, uh, this is a bit stupid. I'm sorry. I said goodbye to everyone. But Florian um, asked me how did I memorize this piece, and it is much easier than one would think, because um, as I said, the, the the complexity is a structure that is is very simple often and the the way the motifs link with each other and I'll, I'll take this example of this this beautiful um, again this beautiful second subject of the second movement of the first movement <laughs> sounds like the most complicated thing but it's, it's 
um, if, if we, we reduce it to its bare bones, it's... That is, that is one thing. Although I, when I learned it, I didn't have um, perhaps such an analytically oriented mind as I, I might have now. But it's worth saying that it's it also um, it's 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 a slow work, but it it fits very well under the hand, and that speaks a lot about Enescu's quality as a pianist. And he wrote in in a way that is really really pianistic, really logical. You will know Florian what I mean. That that there's there's some things simply feel physically logical. So that is. Uh, much much easier um, to learn when 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 the the intellectual side um, sort is sort of is matched on on the physical level. Be doable. I'm looking now at at his third sonata, and I wonder if I can I can put myself through this and maybe worse again. But um, that is that is also a beautiful work, and. Joanna is asking if there is a composer that I find uh, to not have an obvious uh, has not obvious connections with Enescu. Well, I would say that both um, Liszt and Beethoven, as I mentioned, uh, are are not obvious links, and um, it's. It's it's interesting to to know he tried to to walk away from so uh, 